Hey guys, welcome to my vlog. Today me and my friends are gonna play hide and seek. I'm going to win, obviously, because I'm the starting quarterback and a track star. Actually, I'm gonna win. As valedictorian, I'm the smartest person here, so I know the best places to hide. Definitely not. Everyone knows to win hide and seek, you need to be able to disguise. And as the best actor in conservatory, I'm a master at disguise. Okay guys, I'll give you one minute to hide before I come seek. This is the best spot. No one will ever find me here. I am so clever. I just got an email from Harvard. I'm so excited. Harvard has been my dream school ever since I was little. My parents even met at Harvard. Let me see. I, I didn't get in. If the seeker finds me, I'll just outrun him. I'm the most athletic person in the state. At least everybody says so. <laughs> no, no, this can't be happening. How am I supposed to play Friday in front of the scouts? The seeker will never find me now. Look at me. My own mother doesn't know who I am. Did you hear that Susie's going to be the lead role in the next spring play? What? That's the role I was going for. I'm the best actor at Faith Lutheran. If, if Susie got the role, I'm not the lead. What am I? Fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty. Ready or not, here I come. Are you okay? No, my leg is broken. My life is ruined. Come with me. We gotta find the others. Found you. What? I don't get it. I'm not the lead actor in the spring play, and I just lost sight and see? Maybe I am just a terrible actor. Come on, the game's not over yet. Alright, off to find Sage. What? I know I'm the last to be found, but I don't deserve to win this game of hide and seek. I spent my whole life dedicated to getting into Harvard, and I'm, just, I'm still not good enough. All of you have been putting your identity in temporary things, and I know it sucks when you fail, but when we rely on the things of this world, we will be disappointed. But remember, Jesus Christ seeks us out when we are at our lowest. He claims us as his own and gives us a renewed spirit. Jesus came down to earth in human form in order to emphasize his humility and love for us all. Parker is right. Luke 19.10 reminds us, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, and we are all lost, but the Bible has more to say about the Son of Man. Matthew 20 verse 28 says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus did not shy away from his earthly role. As the Son of Man, he is God incarnate, God made man, and he was always clear that eventually he would have to die. Not to pay for what he had done, but to pay for what we have done. In John 12 verse 32, Jesus says, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus told the people that he was going to die, but they didn't realize what he meant. Jesus' death on the cross showed all the aspects of the Son of Man. He came to us, saved us, and served us by paying the price for our sins. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus as the Son of Man always has his sights on the cross. Right now, we are in the season of Lent, where we too can set our eyes on the cross. Let us praise the Son of Man as one. Your name, still, all the seed is still.
It is an absolute joy to be here today to be able to share in God's word and deliver a message to you in this season of Lent. So let's get to it. Keep your eye on the prize is a very tired, old sports cliche. We know what it really means. It means keep your eyes, keep your mind on what's really important. When Jesus was on earth, he didn't need that reminder. He knew what he was here for. Matthew 20, 28 tells us, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. Jesus had his eyes on the cross, which was really a prize for all of us. He came to save all people, to share the gospel, pure joy. But he was rejected by many. Speaking of being rejected while trying to bring people joy, you might recognize the name Hank Aaron, who passed away earlier this year. But back in 1974, on April 8th, if you pulled up a stat sheet for his career up to that point, you'd see he was in his 21st season in Major League Baseball, every one of those spent with the Braves organization. You'd also see that on that night, he was tied with Babe Ruth for the all-time home run record. If you search for a video of Hank Aaron hitting his 715th home run, the one that broke Babe Ruth's record, and by the way, that all-time home run record, especially at the time, was the most hallowed record in all of sports. Probably is still the same today. Maybe doesn't have quite as much meaning as it did back then, but needless to say, it was an important moment. And if you pulled up a video of Hank hitting that 715th home run, you'd see Dodger pitcher Al Dowling on a 1-0 count throw a pitch. Hank Aaron swings and hammers a line drive over the left center field wall and of what was then known as Atlanta Stadium. As the record-breaking home run was hit, the stadium erupted. Braves players jumped with joy, fans went crazy, and even Dodger players applauded Hank Aaron as he trotted around the bases. It was pure joy in that moment for those people that witnessed it. What you may not know, though, is that Hank Aaron's pursuit of Ruth's record was anything but joy in a celebration, especially for himself and his family. At the end of the 1973 season, Aaron had 713 home runs, one short of the immortal babe. It was clear that at age 40, he was going to get the record. It wasn't a matter of if, but when would it happen in that 1974 season. Unfortunately for Hank Aaron, this was the 1970s, not long removed from the civil rights movement, and it was the South. It was a time, much like today, where racial tensions were extremely high. On top of that, Hank Aaron, a black man, was chasing a white icon's record. During the 1973 season, the Atlanta Braves estimated that Hank Aaron was sent 900,000 pieces of mail. 100,000 of those at least were mail, pieces of mail that contained messages of hate and threats. Not just threats to Hank Aaron, but to members of his family. Hank Aaron once said about that, that stretch, quote, it was the worst time of my life. I couldn't leave the ballpark without an escort. My kids had to be escorted, and he meant by the police and or the FBI, to school. I would look around and say to myself, what are you doing wrong? What are you doing but just trying to bring a little enjoyment to people around the country? What was I doing except playing baseball and trying to bring a little happiness to people? And despite all of that, when it came time to celebrate his historic record, Hank Aaron was quoted as saying, I don't want them to forget Babe Ruth. I just want them to remember me. Back to the night that he actually broke Babe Ruth's record, the locker room was set up for celebration. Aaron's teammates were ready to celebrate with him, for him. But before a single bottle of champagne was open, Hank Aaron, who was not known for giving speeches, stood up to talk to his teammate, and they all listened. Hank Aaron said, quote, Thank you for being patient. Thank you for putting up with all that you have, the newspapermen, the photographers, and all other distractions. I know how difficult it was sometimes, and I appreciate the patience you've all shown. On Hank Aaron's night, the first thing he did before celebrating himself was to thank others. He and his family's lives had been threatened multiple times in the worst imaginable ways, and yet he stopped to serve others. Class, grace, humility, and dignity. As incredible as it may be to hear part of Hank Aaron's story of humility and grace, it's nothing compared to what we know about Jesus. God the Father sent his own son to a world that rejected him, despite Jesus trying to bring people the gospel, the ultimate message of joy. Jesus came to tell people, you are forgiven, you are cared for, and most importantly, you're loved. 
and he had his eyes set on the cross the entire time. Jesus knew his fate. He knew that he would be sacrificed in an unimaginably painful way, and yet, as Matthew 20, 28 told us, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. Hank Aaron was a servant his entire life. He was an advocate for minorities in, inside and outside of baseball and is one of the most revered men in terms of character across all sports. As impressive as that is, it pales in, comp in comparison to the servant Jesus was in his time on earth as well as to all of us. He died for you, for all of you. He died for me, for everyone. I pray that you never take that gift lightly. God bless you all. Have a great rest of your day. God has sent the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, into our lives to save us from our sin. He has brought peace into our lives and saved all of our souls. Please join Praise Band in singing, It Is Well. It is well. It
please pray with me. Lord, you see us when we stray from your true desires. You watch us as we attempt to find our identity besides you. However, each time we fail, you seek us out and claim us as yours. We are never alone because you continually come to us, reminding us of your forgiveness and salvation. We love you, Lord. Amen. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. Ezekiel 34, 11. Go in peace, knowing that God has found you and labeled you as His. You are never alone, and you have a permanent identity in Christ. No, no, this can't be happening. How am I supposed to play in front of the... Oh, no, I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> All of you have been putting your identity in temporary things, and I know it sucks when you fail, but when we when, when we will All of you have been putting your identity in temporary things, and I know it sucks when you fail, but when we All of you have been putting your identity in temporary things, and I know it sucks when you fail, but when we Why can't I say that? <laughs> Run, Toshi, run!